right. Yeah, just give me cap now. When you think of Australian motor racing, the two things that come to mind are the V8 supercars and the Mount Panorama circuit. Bathurst, New South Wales. Andrew Woodhouse here alongside uh, Scott Newton here for the European Penpower V8 Supercar Championship. And um, Gotti, well, the mountain, it claims many victims. We're probably going to see that here tonight. And um, for, for these drivers, just surviving might be the order of the day. Yeah, hey, Andrew. Uh, welcome, viewers. Yeah, definitely one of the um, tricky uh, aspects to uh, Mount Panorama is the uh, close nature of the walls uh, being a uh, street circuit uh, most of the year, but uh, for selected events like uh, obviously the Bathurst 1000 and the uh, Bathurst 12 hour, um, it's obviously close to the public, so um, yeah, definitely attrition will play a huge factor today, but um, yeah, we'll see how the other uh, drivers cope out there today. Well, we've got a very large field out there, um, 34 cars looking to tackle this circuit, 6.21 kilometers, 23 corners, and um, very, very difficult one. As, um, as yeah, we pointed out there, Michael Taliancic leads the championship and um, he's on provisional pole position at the moment. Just a couple of drivers sort of finishing their laps. It looks like Taliancic is going to take the pole. Um, 262 points, his advantage, and that is a really, really large margin at this point in the, um, in the season. Uh, he's going to take his second pole position here as well, it looks like. Tony Klusterman just behind him. Well, um, got a difficult task today. Uh, in the in the standings, well, Boosterman he sits in third, and he is uh, three hundred and forty nine points behind. So, a lot of things that he needs to do in order to catch up. He's done two races less, Scott, than Michael has. Um, Steve Latimore's in second place, and he's done one less. So, it, we are really seeing the fact that the attendance is the key at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Boosterman's just gone fastest on his. Final lap of the session. Sorry, um, Scott, to interrupt you there, but he's just gone over the line to um, snatch pole position away. Yeah, definitely. Great job by uh, Klusman there to take uh, the pole position uh, just under two tenths quicker than uh, Teljanic. Um One of the uh, prominent drivers in um, uh, Australian V8 uh, Supercar Series, uh, both official and uh, V8 Scops. So, um, Klusman, uh stellar job uh, to grab the pole. Uh, in the dying minutes. It's always tough to do when you've got one lap to um, make your mark, and Tony Klusman has done that. I'm going to take you down to down through the starting grid, as it were. Tony Klusman then, 206.911, takes pole position. Michael Taliancic alongside him with a 207.1. Then there's a bit of a gap to several drivers who are tightly packed in the top six. Chris Jackson, Domin Gantar, Johnny Brandon, and Stephen Lattimore. Steve Lattimore, of course, second in the standings at the moment. Michael Evdoka is in seventh, with Andres Perez in eighth, Klaus Winter in ninth, Victor Morjon is tenth. Kim Holter lines up eleventh, with Nikolai Bog Bogatirev in twelfth, uh, Matthew Belton in thirteenth, Ben Galait fourteenth, fifteenth for Dave Janssen, Anthony Woodward in sixteenth, Juan Pablo Tononi in seventeenth, eighteenth for Alec Kowalski. Peter Bingham in 19th, Samuel Buzan in 20th, Craig Barson 21st, Simon Field, familiar name to viewers here on Apex Racing TV, as is Adam McNally, they make up 22nd and 23rd places, Clyde Whiting 24th, Richard Brightwell in 25th, Johan Venter 26th, John Roberts 27th, Roland Moons in 28th, Robert Lundgren is 29th, Ronald Van Eitrecht is 30th, Bill Switzer is 31st, and then at the back, not sure whether they're going to take the start, but Wayne Laker, Michael Blum, and Lewis Bibby. Okay, then just looking at this um, starting grid, one of the things, obviously, uh, Scott, that we've got is a very short main straight. So some of the drivers near the back of the field, they're going to be starting almost on the last corner. Yeah, it's definitely one of those um, things that you don't want to be doing, especially uh, starting around the um, the final corner. So um... It always compromise you um, adding up the mountains. Uh, sorry, the front straight. But uh, having said that, uh, just everyone looking for a clean start, uh, getting through the um, uh, the first lap. Uh, just got a minute under 
uh, gridding just before the start of the race, but uh, race formats today, uh, 20 minute sprint race, uh, and then uh, a bit of a short break, and then uh, we'll be having that was a one hour uh, feature race with a reverse grid, so uh, definitely looking forward to uh, both of the races, but uh, with the sprint race coming up. Uh, yeah, definitely, just, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, with um, the sprint race uh, starting very, very soon, yeah, it's going to be uh, very, very action-packed. I think you're right. 22 degrees air temperature, however, 39 degrees track temperature, the sun baking down onto the circuit here in New South Wales. And, uh, yeah, I think drivers are going to have to look after their tyres somewhat here, just about ready for the start here at the Mount Panorama Circuit. Green light is on. And wait for Kluseman, and good start from him, Talijancic. Lots in on the outside line. Him under pressure from Chris Jackson, but manages to get through and stay in second place. Dominic Ganta is in uh, fourth position, and uh, Johnny Brandon's held on to fifth. Good start there. It looks like everybody is through um, Hell Corner properly and without incidents gone. Yeah, so uh, great to see uh, everyone leaving that uh, racing room. As uh, going on too wide up mountain straight, but uh, everyone uh, looking as though they're uh, going into single file as they're uh, making their way up through the cutting now. Even though it's a sprint race, you don't don't want to DNF here because you will be at the back for round two. Um, remember, reverse grid is in play. But if you if you don't manage to finish the race, then um, you will not be reversed anywhere near pole position, and that's what some of these drivers are um, really bearing in mind at this point. Oh, a couple of drivers very close to the wall. Look like Johnny Brandon was um, pretty close at the top of the hill. Threw him at Fairley Park and somebody's wide, very, very wide there. It might have been, uh, it might have been Benga Light. He got out onto the curb and um, took a bit of the grass and the gravel. Yeah, it's definitely something you don't want to do. Uh, we saw in uh, qualifying for the uh, the actual v uh, Supercars Bathurst 1000 that uh, McLaughlin got up on the uh, the curb on the outside of uh, McPhillamy there, and yeah. Um, yeah, something you definitely don't want to do because it can fire you uh, into the left-hand wall and uh, end your race for right there. Yeah, he, he um, got away with that really. Really pushing the boundaries on the way to that magnificent lap. First ever lap in the 203s here at Mount Panorama in qualifying. And off goes Andres Perez and a separate incident, I believe, a spin for. Oh, I'm trying to get. I can see who that was. It's Michael Evdoka. And I think. I do not believe there was any contact there. I could be wrong. Let's see. Oh, no, they were, they were two separate um, two separate things. Evdoka lost it. And then. Um, he went off in the. Um, he went off separately, did uh, Andres Perez. It's a bit of a tricky braking zone, uh, the chase. Coming in there at about 285 kilometres an hour and trying to pull it up in such a short space of time, it's uh, very, very tricky, especially with no ABS in, this, in these cars. So, Well, these things are very difficult to slow down at the best of times, and yeah, after such a fast section. One of the fastest sections probably in V8 supercars and uh, it's a tough corner to brake for even though the uh, the last part of the braking area is somewhat uphill it doesn't really seem to help and uh, however Tony Klusterman is loving the mountain so far 1.3 seconds is the lead over Michael Taliancic Chris Jackson is in third with um, Johnny Brandon actually making a move past Domin Gantar and into fourth place Gantar getting very close to the wall on the outside there into McFillamy Park. Down the hill they come then. Gantar looking to um, get back to Johnny Brandon. Through the dipper and then towards Forest Elbow. Oh, somebody's hit the wall, I can hear it. It must have been Chris Jackson. He got damage to the rear, Scott. I can't see. Yeah, it's just coming uh, past. Did he hit the? Did he hit the inside? He's got damage on the front left. Did he actually hit the inside wall? Yeah, it looks as though he scraped the inside of the yeah, forest elbow. Um, it's a bit of a tricky corner that one. You want to try and tuck in as best as you can. 
uh, to get the best exit out of the elbow, but um, it looks as though that Jackson uh, just turned in just that little bit too early, but uh, yeah, it cost him that little bit of uh, uh, of a run down uh, Con Road and uh, has uh, paid a bit of a price uh, gap at the moment to tell the engine to be at 1.6 seconds. And he's now missing a panel off the front of the Holden Commodore, which isn't going to do him any favours, I don't think, throughout this race. He's probably lucky this is only a 12 lap race here in uh, at Mount Panorama race one. It looks like laps and not time for these guys. So just, just over just under 25 minutes or maybe just over 25 minutes actually it's going to be as we see uh, Anthony Woodward going toe to toe with what looks like uh, Peter Bingham and it is Peter Bingham and Bogratiev going off into the wall I don't know if he I don't know if he did hit the wall Nikolai Bogatriev. But he manages to survive, and he's just in front of, uh, that is, Diamond Field in car 26. So, three laps to go, Scott, and uh, three laps to go, three laps gone, sorry. Uh, that's more like it, at least. Um, what are the, what's the driver's mindset now? I imagine it's just settling into the uh, into the race and making sure you pound out those laps and, and make no mistakes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, at the moment, uh, I reckon the fuel burn will be around about uh, five litres per lap, so uh, the drivers will uh, be, I think, pretty close on fuel. I saw that the uh, fuel tank was restricted uh, in terms of size, so... Um, whether 75%. We, yeah, whether we... Whether we see a uh, pit stop in the sprint race, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, it'll be interesting to see whether that will happen. Um, as a 13 lap race, um, my calculation is it might be right on the window as Bogotreo, um has a bit of a mistake oh. into the chase. And field is off as well. So, again, excuse <coughs> me. Another victim of that breaking zone. Oh, and um, what on earth is that going on? Juan Pablo Tononi. What's he done there? Oh, he's lost the rear on the braking, Scott, for the uh, for Murray's bend. Got on the grass and sort of bumbled across the curb, and I think he's, I think he's okay. Oh, there's been somebody's blown an engine, and I think it's Matthew Belton. Blown engine, smoke absolutely churning out of that Ford Falcon. Oh wait, it's not a Ford; it's a Holden. It's fine. Um, what happened? Oh wait, there's two blown engines. I think one might take some unraveling. Oh right, okay, so. Dave Janssen loses it, Scott, coming out of Griffin's bed. Loses it completely. Hits the inside wall. And then coming in is um, Tim Holter, who blows the motor. And also blowing the motor is Matthew Belton. Yeah, just Two having a look at it. engines there. Three cars in, in a lot of bother. Yeah, it's a bit of an unfortunate mistake there for Janssen. Um, that exit curve there can bite pretty hard and uh, yeah, definitely paid the price for it. Um, it was unfortunate that uh, Belton was caught up in that as well. As, um, yeah, we've still got uh, nine laps to go. Um, this is kind of what we were what we were saying in the pre-show though, wasn't it? That, you know, you've got... The walls are so close, it doesn't really take even much of a mistake to end your race round here. No, it's just that slightest curve or that uh, especially the bump out of um, the cutting uh, that can unsettle the car and um, yeah it'll send the car around and pretty much un end your race right there and then so uh, well, I've crashed the Formula Renault there a couple of times in the uh, in the BSR series when we were here 
yeah, it, it just surprises you. you. You seem like you're exiting the corner quite nicely and then just end up getting um, completely kind of caught out by by the camber of the corner. I just want to look at um, number uh, number four, Adam McNally, in uh, 15th place. Fresh off his best ever finish in the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship just two evenings ago on Thursday night. Finished in, uh, I believe, he got fourth position in race four. And I say best ever finish, he hasn't been at it long in the BSRTC. Just a few rounds, but he'll be happy, he'll be boisterous and Youth Energy car has a lot of sponsorship on it. Um, will we? Uh, he, well, he's trying to gain on Michael Evdoka, but he's going to he's going to struggle here because Evdoka qualified in second place, uh, seventh place. Sorry, he fell back early on, Scott. But fighting back through the field nicely up to 14th, he'd gone down to sort of the 20s. Yeah, it's good to see that uh, Adams made up uh, eight positions at the moment. Um, so. Bit of a hard charger at the moment. I see that that's probably the driver that's had the most positions gained. So, uh, great job there from Adam. Uh, currently, eight, eight positions gained for Craig Barson as well, and um, 12 positions gained for Lewis Bibby, which isn't a great surprise, although he is um, he's quite a way down. So, I wonder if uh, if he might have started from the pits. Yeah, I saw that um, Bibby was uh, the last guy on the grid, so uh, yeah, he would have had the option. Uh, to start from the pit lane as he would have lost pretty much nothing he probably would have saved a bit of fuel apart from uh, revving it on the grid so um, yeah great job there from uh, Lewis Bibby uh, back into the top 20 at the moment so but, um, yeah it looks as though that um, the front two are still pretty much the same gap as they were before but uh, oh oh and that's uh, Bogatayrev again Going sideways through uh, Murray's bend, nearly lost it. He made a good save, in fact, uh, in the end. And uh, yeah, good driving to rescue the car, but he's having all sorts of trouble out there. That's putting him down in 17th place. Five positions lower than where he started, actually, so. Uh, Run about hard charges. Clyde Whiting's gained nine positions actually as well. So um, good driving from uh, one of the series admins at the front. Pusterman leading by 1.7 seconds. Talianchich has stabilised the gap. So um, championship leader not giving up on this race yet. And why should he? We're only at half distance. Lap times that time round. Pusterman 208.229, 208.219. For Michael Talianchic, evenly matched all season, these guys, and continue to be so. Chris Jackson again getting very close to the, the inside wall at Forest Elbow. Stephen Lattimore getting close to the outside wall. But now he's got a good slipstream down the Conrod straight. And we'll see what he can do. Look at that, Scott. Look at the overspeed. Yeah, he'll get a huge run. Uh, Jackson defending uh, heavily there, and uh, let's just say that uh, Ganta, oh, sorry, Lattimore manages oh. to get around the outside. Oh, I tell you what, mate, I have my heart in my mouth a little bit then because he nearly touched the grass just as he was about to break for the chase. And uh, I tell you what, going, he left that room on the inside and that really narrows that corner down and up. And Chris Jackson now having to defend massively from Gantar. And um, Dom and Gantar is going to have a look into how corner is he? No. But Chris Jackson. Maintaining P4, at least for now. Oh, Gantas going to go through on the... Going to try and go through on the inside. He opened the line up, did Jackson. He opened the inside for Dom and Ganta. And it looks like he's going to go through. Oh, very close. Around the outside goes Jackson. Remember that Donny Brandon's in there as well. He might try and take advantage. And through he goes. And that's before the cutting. Says, do you mind if I cut in? And uh, he does indeed cut into fourth position. Yeah, great job there. Position. Yeah, great job there from Johnny Brandon. They're taking full advantage of uh, was it Jackson's mistake. I definitely don't want to go yeah. too wide through the cutting as it narrows quite quite a lot. So um, yeah, great awareness from both of those drivers. Uh, I think That's what you've got to do in this at this racetrack, though, isn't it? Because 
it, it's a circuit where people, you know, overtaking isn't massively easy. You do have to usually wait for mistakes. Yeah, just as we see, oh. Jackson running a little bit wide there, uh, manages to yep. gather it up. Has he got uh, rear damage? Uh, it's He's got damage to the rear suspension, mate, I think. Has he? That car looks like it's sliding around. Is that crabbing slightly? Uh, we can have a look on board. Yeah, it is. Is it? It looks a bit weird. The rear end's looking decidedly dodgy. Yeah. I think he's been in the wall again, you know? Yeah, he must have had a... the rear of the car this yeah. time. Yeah, got a bit of small brush. Uh, out of the cutting, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the wall's he's quite close so there. He's got so much oversteer now. Yeah, we be definitely trying to trim the bars, uh, or the brake bars too, to uh, so even the balance out at the moment. So we've got five laps to go of the race, uh, yeah. just over I mean, 10 I mean, minutes I mean, luckily, luckily for him, it's not the hour-long teacher race, and he can um, potentially just cruise it home, maybe only lose a couple of positions. He's actually got uh, Klaus Winter about one second behind him, but behind Winter is another four seconds to Andres Perez, so maybe in four laps, Jackson can just ease it home to a top eight finish, and I think he might be fairly happy with that after being in the wars a little bit. Michael Evdoka's uh, recovery continues. He is just behind Craig Barson. He's right in the slipstream. Somebody spun, and it's... So oh, it's on the field. It is. It's field. That's a big one. He's lost, a, lost most of the front end of, the, uh, of that Ford there. Coming through Hell Corner. Oh, he just lost the rear. He got up on the kerb. Just lost the rear into the front into the wall and um, I think he'd already had a knock to the uh, to the bonnet got and uh, that sec second knock just knocked it off completely yeah it's a bit of a uh, tricky exit uh, curb there at uh, the exit of Hill Corner I uh, definitely want to try and tra take it as straight as you can uh, and then feed the power on but uh, unfortunately for the uh, field there that he um, just bit the throttle a little bit too hard and uh, and spun it around and uh, clicked the inside wall I think his cooling will be optimised now anyway. I think he'll have to worry about that. Uh, <laughs> he's oh, he'll have to worry now! Oh! Big crash. Big crash for Simon Field. He needs to get it off the line. He does. Oh, big one. Massive one. He does a spin turn. I think he's only actually lost he's only actually lost a couple of places, I think, with that one. Michael Bloom has also got oh god, he's got no he's got no bonnet and he's got no boot on that car as well. So he is um he's struggling a bit, let's be honest. Yeah. I mean he's got thirteen positions gain though, mate, so <laughs> you know, silver linings and all that. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Um uh, just looking back up further at the front we saw the battle between uh, Craig Barson and uh, was it Anthony Woodward uh, up into Hell Corner going too wide. Uh, both will be compromised in the exit there, but it's just like that Barson's managed to hold on and defend around the outside. Oh, look, he might get the slipstream. Got a decent run, but can only get within a couple of cars' widths. Uh, length, sorry. At, uh, Griffin's Ben. Hoosterman's lead is 2.1 now with uh, four laps to go, and uh, the Canadian seems to be cruising along to what would be another win for the reigning champion. However, leads at Bathurst are never easily kept. He's won three races this season as Hoosterman, and uh, number four will taste very sweet indeed. But he knows it's only really half the job done because the feature race counts for more points. So this is the thing, Scott. He's got to. Um... He's just got to keep the concentration up, make sure he doesn't make any mistakes, and focus on second round. Which, of course, if he does win this one, it's going to be a hell of a lot tougher with the reverse grid. 
Yeah, definitely. With um, the large field, uh, is it everyone on the lead lap that gets reversed, or is it a uh, complete reverse grid? Yeah, I believe it's everyone on the. Uh, I believe it's lead lap. Okay, so currently at the moment we're looking at a. I think they have tried a couple of different rules potentially for that. Um, but I think it should be lead lap cars. Yeah, so we're looking at a uh, 23 to 24. Uh, reversed grid field so uh, currently as it stands at the moment I think it's Peter Bingham uh, the last car in the lead lap is about about two minutes behind but um, he might have been the last car that just got lapped so uh, Simon Field is the, uh, the next car up the road the 026 car that is uh, looking to be on the lead lap as we've got uh, three laps to go yeah, and been a reasonably tame race at the front, but you've got to remember it's one of the hardest tracks on the circuit, and 10 seconds between the top two and everybody else showing the quality of Klusterman and Talianchic. Uh, Latimer and Ganta, no slouches themselves. However, uh, these guys obviously setting a hot pace, and, and Scott, one of the reasons, uh, one of the things we do see some drivers really just excelling at these kind of speciality tracks, if you will, the likes of Spa and the Nordschleife and Gear and uh, you know, places like that, real drivers' tracks. Yeah, it definitely is. As you said, uh, some drivers are gelling uh, very well to this track. Um, must be partly the setup, but also by uh, They've uh, done loads of learns and laps around here. Um, definitely takes a lot of practice to uh, be able to be fast around here um, due to uh, the confidence that they, the drivers need. As um, Lattimore and Gantz are very, very close as well. Um, no challenge at the moment. But um, yeah, Tally and Klisterman, uh, I've seen them uh, running quite a lot in uh, either official series or uh, via Supercar Online Premier Series. So. That has played definitely into their strengths as well. So, um, but there's no substitute for, for league racing, really, is there? Oh, exactly. or, or even official racing, you know. And uh, these guys, obviously, big beneficiaries of that. Uh, Latimore did get quite close to Ganta, but Ganta had a very good help call. But this is a car as well, mate, where you know. Experience is pretty much everything here, isn't it? Such a difficult car to drive. I mean, I used to drive this car every now and again, and uh, you know, it was okay, but always a very tough one. Yeah, definitely, especially with uh, 650 horsepower rear wheel drive, about 13, 1400 kilos, and uh, no traction control. Uh, it's definitely a very, very tricky car to drive. Uh, Especially with a lot of understeer, uh, not much front down force. Uh, will uh, be. It's always a tricky car to drive. Uh, I've tested around here, and uh, I've been three, four seconds off the pace. So uh, it's luckily that I'm not out there, and uh, we've got this, uh, quite a quality field out here today. Hey, we could have been. Uh, we could have been, you know, pootling around at the back. You know, I reckon. Uh, th I must admit that I would have crashed by now. Uh, I can guarantee you I would have crashed by now. So uh, maybe a track, maybe an easier track, I'd be okay. But yeah, here, um, I've never, I have actually driven the V8 supercar here once and it was really, really tough. Um, you've really got to work at it a little bit. Um, I can hear some, there's something going on. Um, Simon Field's car is an absolute mess. He's about to get lapped and as is Dave Janssen. So two guys who've been really in the wars. Um, cars in the pit and out of the race. Ronald Van Eitrecht, uh Robert Lundgren, Ben Galite is out as well. And then the others, Kim Holter, Matthew Belton, are, are lapped down, as is Peter Bingham. Um, Samuel Buzan is still going around, but he's three laps down. Lewis Bibby is out, Bill Switzer is out, and Pablo Tanoni is out, and uh, Robert Lundgren is out. Only Wayne Lake they didn't take the start. Lusman puts a lap on Simon Field. Experienced driver Simon Field. 
BSRTC. Michael Taliancic then. His championship lead will be reduced a little bit, but um, all in all, Scott, I think that's a very, very um, acceptable performance in this race. It didn't give up many points and looks to be heading for second. Yeah, definitely a great job there from Michael. Uh, just consolidating his lead. Uh, as you said, uh, small points lost, but uh, with the feature race coming up, or, yeah, it could go either way. Um, Taliancic starting in front of uh, Klusterman, and uh, you never know what could happen in front as well. But um, we'll I mean, it's, we, we said on Thursday night, we were here for the BSRTC, and um, we did say that track blockages can be very, very possible here and especially in a reverse grid race. So, yeah, it's all um, all to play for in race two. But now race one, just about complete. Tony Klusem has just got the very, very fast ink here. Base section. 260 kilometers an hour through there. Hard on the brakes for the chase chicane. And now he's just got Murray's bend to go. Well, Tony Klusterman claims his fourth win of the season. Brown Murray's out of there cleanly. Tony Klusterman of Canada wins here in Australia. Michael Taliancic second, three seconds down. And uh, it looks like Stephen Lattimore on the final lap has managed to get past Ganter. He'll be ecstatic about that Lattimore. He comes home, he finishes on the podium. Gantar in fourth. Donny Brandon in fifth. And we're looking down the field then. If there's any more action going on. To be honest, we've got... Oh, Alec Kowalski going very, very wide indeed. Trying to get past Clyde Whiting. He's got damage. Whiting's got a lot of damage. Kowalski doesn't really need to push that hard. Could be able to get him here. This is a right little train of cars. Alec Kowalski's car, uh, Scott, is um, completely fine. And he's got um, Michael Blum. And he's got Ty White in front with a hell of a lot of damage. Yeah, I just also saw that... Um, oh, look. There McNally, he goes. I, uh, so uh, Kowalski's through. A uh, great job from him. Also saw that uh, McNally managed to make a uh, place on uh, Brightwell right at the end there. the same... Uh, place that they're heading up to now and breaking into the chase. So, uh, great job there from McNally to uh, Kowalski up into, what was that, 17th or 18th place. So, uh, what was, who was that in front? Uh, was that John Roberts? No, that wasn't. It was a, possibly a lap car. So, uh, Kowalski coming around the final quarter now. Uh, finishes within the top 20 and uh, will be within the front uh, three rows. Uh, from the start of the feature race, so or race number two, so uh, he'll be looking forward to uh, a solid finish in the, uh, the feature race. Oh, Ronald Moons has spun at the um, at the final chicane. Not the finest hour for him there at the end, but um, still seven, well six positions gained, and he's going to finish twenty second. Take you through the finishing order then for. Um, Round 13 of the season in the Penpal European V8 Supercar Championship. Tony Klusterman takes the win. Reigning champion, of course. Michael Taliancic in second. Stephen Lattimore third. Domin Gantar takes fourth. With Donny Brandon in fifth. And Chris Jackson in sixth. Klaus Winter in seventh. Ahead of Andres Perez in eighth. Victor Moraes on ninth. And tenth, Michael Evdoka. Craig Barson in eleventh. Twelfth for the youth energy car of Adam McNally. Anthony Woodward in 13th, Richard Brightwell 14th, 15th for Nikolai Bogatyarev, who um, had a very eventful race. Uh, Johan Venter in 16th place, John Roberts in 17th, Alec Kowalski 18th, Michael Blum in 19th, Clyde White in 20th, 21st was Dave Janssen, Ronald Moon's 22nd, and then the retirements, or the cars one lap down or more, Peter Bingham, Matthew Belton, Kim Holter, Simon Field, and then the retirements, Ronald Van Eitrecht, Samuel Buzan, Bill Switzer, Ben Galite, Lewis Bibby, Juan Pablo Tononi, and Robert Lundgren. Right then, everybody, we've got the reverse grid race coming up. Um, how long have we got there, Scott? 
until the reverse grid race comes up? I think it's about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I think looking at the... Oh, we've got quarter past quarter past eight. So yeah, 20 minutes time. Um, we've got... Are there any incidents from that race that you want to have a look at? Or, or did you not really see... There wasn't really that much out there, was there? It was mostly single, mostly single car crashes, wasn't it, and things like that. So, um, but yeah, okay, right. So we've got about um, twenty minutes, as we said before the next race. We'll be back in about fifteen minutes. That coverage of the feature race. Um, in the meantime, I believe Scott, we're going to show some of the BSL Formula Renault series from the other night, are we? Yeah, right. Uh, just as a uh, bit of a support race um, with the gap. Uh, decided to show our BSR Formula Renault 2.0 series uh, here at Bathurst as well. So it uh, should be a, uh, a fantastic uh, support race uh, just with the uh, the gap uh, in between the uh, the race one and the race two in the uh, V8 uh, European Supercar Championship. All right, excellent. We'll be back for that in about 15 minutes' time. Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and the BSR Formula Renault here from uh, Mount Panorama Circuit in Australia on Jordan House and Die Racing World Championship driver Alex Simpson with you and uh, Alex race one was um, pretty attritional there's a lot of drivers finding the walls and uh, oh could well be like that again in race two yeah I think uh, more of the same is what we're uh, going to expect from this one <laughs> on Depker on pole then for Apex Racing Academy, Alexander Smolenski in second, Roy Viverke third, fourth Paul Denton, fifth Josh Thompson, Jos Honig in sixth, with Stephen Baxter in seventh, Jack Keithley eighth, Martin Van Lusenord in ninth, and Stelian Cepolewski in tenth, Yannick Ongener eleventh, and at the back then is Rafe Cullen. Fifteen seconds to go. Start of round two of the evening, round 134. Of 140. Here we go then, red lights are on. Green light is on. It's a decent start by Depka. Smolenski got away better for Prosim. Both of Verke in third. And oh, it's. Whatever. The oh. wheel to wheel further back. I think uh, Thompson's in the pits. I think they've all got through that turn one. I thought for a minute there was going to be contact. The Faker guys and the uh, Apex guys getting pretty close together. Admit. Come on, very slow on the inside. I don't know who that is. Who is but that? Very, very slow. Malensky, just literally crawling up the straight. Oh, really? So he's just getting out of the way of everybody? Yeah, uh, it he? looked like it, yeah. There's no real sense in for Smolenski in fighting every, everyone. He is off the pace around this circuit. And, uh, yeah, if he if he does decide to go wheel-to-wheel -wheel with people, it's just not getting those points for ProSim that he was drafted into the championship to do just that. Well, this is the thing. They're here for one reason and one reason only, isn't it? And that's to score points on a regular basis oh, so that ProSim get the um, the AM championship. You're right. Uh, Van Lu it is Van Luz not up the inside of Denton. Third already. It's ridiculous. The downhill section is so quick around oh. here, but I think it's his starts that really, you know, set yep. him apart from everybody else in this series. Because he's not much, much faster than the likes of Keithley, is he? But just his racecraft is just better, isn't it? It's just more polished. Yep, that's it. Keithley is he's going by his teammate. Yep. He's trying to take his teammate, Paul Denton. Dylan Cepelowski and Jos Honig side by side as well coming down. If you can see them splitting the crown of the road, yep. as we were talking about in race one, of course, don't want the car to bottom out. Very low ground clearance in these Formula Renaults. 
Holly goes a bit wide. Oh, spin. I think Ongana again. He's having oh. a mare tonight. Having so. a mare of a, a showdown. Just terrible uh, results for Yannick Ongana in the last few weeks. Josh Thompson goes through and into will be, I think it's 10th place. 11th. 11th, sorry. Yep. Start from oh. the pits as well, so he's on the back of the pack already. So right, good first the, lap from, uh, from the bottom. Now he's, now he's here. Martin's into <laughs> the lead already. If I lose, yeah, into the lead. Nick and Tom Decker coming out of turn one. That would be Decker's job. It's for, uh, for himself and for Martin, and there's not to keep. Like if Jack Keithley behind. Keithley's got to take the crossing car of Roy Bavirke up the inside then of the Belgian. He goes into the uphill section. He's got to hug the wall on the inside there. It's so easy to understeer into the wall. But Jack Keithley going through and into third place. Once more, ascending the ranks here in this race, the BSR Formula Renault Series. That eight lap race here in round two of the evening. Four in total. Rounds 133 to 136 of the season out of 140. Still in Cempelewski's on the move as well. He's trying to get past Jos Honig, but he's not going to do it in this downhill section. That's one thing you can't do in the uh, coming down the mountain is you can't really get overtakes done. No, you just have to be patient, don't you, really, coming down there. There's just no room. It's one line. Uh, watch for anybody who makes mistakes, really, you can where you can get by. Yep. Indeed. And... Uh, the walls are in such close proximity, you don't make any mistakes at all. Van Lusnod is away, and that is the last I think we'll see of him, ladies and gentlemen, in this one. And that's no disrespect to anybody else, it's just the truth. Yeah, but Keith, you've gone past Epka as well. If you up into P2, then. What you've effectively got is 1, 2, and 3 in the Pro Series stand ins right one, there. 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. <laughs> in the exact. Uh, well, not the right order, but yeah. Great job from Roy Viverke in still maintaining E4. The pressure here though, he just didn't get the traction out of the corner, did he? And Denton, coming up the inside, be important for Denton's championship. Goes through, Viverke, not one of the quicker drivers in this series, but at least at this track. And uh, yeah, struggling there to keep those faker guys behind. Yossone having a look as well. Behind them, Stephen Baxter and Stelian Cepalewski going wheel to wheel. Baxter finished third in race one. And that's up into seventh position for, for him. All there, exactly what I was talking about, about the camber on the inside of turn two. As for Verke, it was sort of wide, just couldn't carry the speed through and almost lost the place to uh, Honig behind, even though he was the aggressor there. So. It's like the first Lesmo, isn't it, really? Yeah, exactly. The closer you get to the inside, the better, better grip you have. A little pack Look here, though. Just yeah. Uh, Czepilewski and, um, yeah, Honig and Viverke here. I think that counts as a gaggle, mate. What do you think? That's it. I think we have a gaggle, finally. Officially do. Holy cow. And uh, coming down the mountain. Going down the mountain when they come. And uh, well, they've all made it so far without backing it into the wall. Here in Australia, Mount Panorama, um, situated in New South Wales. You uh, say that, I think uh, this lap by Epcot has found the wall because he's got oh, no. a massive amount of um, wing damage. He must have found the wall. I thought I heard something in the background the as well. So so elbow, it it not? Did. Oh! It was on the entry to Forest though. He lost the rear under braking. It just pushes him into the wall. He didn't hit the wall on the outside on the way out. It was on the way in. Oh, Alex. look at this. Don't this look. is a gaggle now. Um, all this two by two. Oh man. Prosim and um, yeah, Faker going at it. Baxter up the inside of Epilevsky and he's going to get Viverka here. So that's Martin a has lost the lead. Uh, Keithley's through. Oh. What's happened there? And, and Baxter's taken three positions on one one straight, Alex. One corner and one straight. Oh, wow. Let's, to, well, let's get uh, a little look. Let's get a little look back at that. And then let's take a quick look and see what happened to Martin. They're all over the road here. Thompson's in there. Cullinan's in there, if you can tell me. We've got the one going into uh, Murray's. And they've got great drive out of Murray's, actually. 
It's going to be straight by all of them, isn't he? Yeah, fantastic move. And of course, he's got the inside um, where where the camber lies for uh, nice. Hill Corner. And uh, yeah, straight through. So that's awesome stuff. All right, and let's look back and see what happened to um, to Martin. Lost the lead. What a disaster. Uh, well, a disaster for him. Elation for Jack Keithley, who, uh, if he can keep the victory in his sights, oh. then uh, he might almost secure the championship tonight. Had a spin, that was all it was. Nothing nothing major, no slowdown or anything like that. Well, that'll um, teach me for uh, saying stupid things at the start of the race, then, won't it? <laughs> he's losing ground, like hand over fist at the minute, though, So, which I don't know why, because he shouldn't have had any damage off of that at all. We'd, he didn't yeah, hit anything or anything like that, so... Quite slow in a straight line, isn't he, compared to Keithley? It's about 10 kilometres an hour down, mate. Hmm, that's a bit odd. Well, maybe but not so much now. He's getting in it back at the end of the straight. He just seemed to... He just seemed slow to reach that speed. See what the gap is. It was um, 3.1 seconds in reverse. Keithley comes across and does a... 2.018 See how much time exactly Van Loosnaw's lost 2.09.59 seconds he lost there Yeah, and, and the this last will be a real was a 2 minute to get flat that. that he did so he's got the pace to catch back up to uh, Jack and he's already started to bring that gap down but yeah, it, it let it rise to quite a high high figure and they're still battling behind as well this is a great little, little fight It's going to be a That's real struggle Chevy for Thompson for now though Cullen and, oh. uh, and Yannick as well is Finn. involved in it now. Malensky. Oh, Depka out. Oh. Unfortunately, he must have had a uh, meatball. Yep. So he won't score any points for this one, but he won't meatball mind Meatball for quite an innocuous. Oh! oh. That's uh, Thompson and... Uh, did they go in the wall or, or, or did I think it was Thompson and Cullen that were very, very close. They managed to stay, stay out the wall, but that was... Uh, yeah, that could have been nasty. I think they have just avoided it, haven't they? So, yeah. Thompson, very close. It's a great battle, this in the midfield. Fantastic. It's been like that for the last few weeks, hasn't it, between these drivers? Whoa! Who was that really close to the wall? That was uh, Ongonet. He's really letting it all hang out here. Thompson, well, he's desperately searching for a way through. You've got to say to Josh, he's a driver who really likes to trim out the car. Just be patient, don't hit anything on the way down the mountain. You might have half a chance of picking somebody off into the chicane. Yeah, he got a little out of shape, didn't he, there? And uh, set him back a little bit. He falls into the trap, Josh Thompson, of just overdriving the car. And here comes Yannick Ongana, who needs a good result, just of any kind, really. Not even for the championship, just for his, his own sanity, possibly. As he comes down Conrad straight. Side by side with Rafe Cullen. Cullen's got the outside, he's not going to give up easily here. Irishman on the inside. On the outside goes the Belgian. He That's takes a good it. Move. Good That's move enough. from Yannick in the end. Cullen wasn't going to give up that position. In that fight at least, and that's how it should be. With two weeks to go in the championship. I want to see the Faker guys racing each other next week hard, Alex, because... Yeah, 2.3 seconds between um, Baxter and Denton right now, and um, Baxter coming at Denton at about a second a lap, so maybe this will give us an indication of uh, their mindset right now. Although, I have to say, Baxter is sensible enough just to stay right behind, because losing one point after gaining about six or seven on the last race, and it's no big deal, keeps him safe. Heathley lost half a second to Van Lusenord on that last lap. And uh, it's not going to be enough though, he's not going to get there at that sort of pace. He needs like a second a lap, really. Yeah, and can't, maybe can't he even see to... Jack, really. Oh, but as well, on board Keithley, Keithley's just. He's smart now. He'll just be pacing himself, won't he? Because he does not want to be pushing too hard. He does not need a Definitely. DNF here tonight because that would be absolutely disgusting uh, for his championship, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this isn't a disaster for Martin either, really. I mean, it's going to take a DNF, I think, for Martin to win this championship from, um, from Jack because there's just not enough points difference from sort of first to 
sort of 10th, 11th, or 12th, yep. you know, and I think even when Jack gets damages, he's still finishing around sort of 8th place, so... It barely um, matters where you finish at the minute, doesn't uh, it? it, it yeah, once you've got this kind of a lead, you're right. It does. It just just a case of you need to finish. Really, he might as well start. Every, I mean, I know he's he's got going to have more uh, more honour than that. You would think, but you, you almost think he might as well just start every race in the pit lane, and just trundle along at the back and finish he, the race. But yeah, he could do exactly that. Right. So Denton and Baxter, them very close together. Let's see what their two uh, mindsets are. He almost doesn't Vince. need to... Uh, Vince going to let him go. I think so, would you? But <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't think so now. Maybe two or three weeks ago I would have done. But. I mean, Baxter should surely just be able to get the momentum here to get by anyway, naturally, down the straight. Pulls out the slipstream. Right, if there's anything um, Denton can do here, he's got the inside well, as Baxter, side. so he's going to have um, the high ground. Oh, squeeze. Oh. No, he doesn't squeeze him. I thought he was going to squeeze him for a moment, but actually that was just... <laughs> Then <laughs> getting out, just uh, clearly on the radio, he's like, on you go. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when all Paul Denton's going to lose is probably, what, one point? One point, yeah. Maybe two. <laughs> like, it's not really yeah. it's not, it's it's not really a hurt him at all, is it? Of one point, he's got a net loss of one point, so you're right, two points effectively is what he's lost. Two points, so I mean, yeah. not gonna, it's not going to be anything you'll lose sleep about, I don't think. For well, the final round of the season, God knows where that's going to be. Be the Nurburgring. Yeah, like I say, the Norschleife looking like the uh, the favourite for the moment. I'm not sure that's the most sensible of places to do a final round, but the drivers are picking, so yeah, it's up to them. We'll, I'm um, a driver, I could we'll broadcast it, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's on the Facebook group. Tracks do we have? Tracks can we vote on? Brands Hatch, Nurburgring, Norschleife, Mosport, Interlagos, Dolder. Himmler and Snetterton. Uh, oh, Inter Lagos, final round. Who want that? That's what my vote is. It's an unchippy. That speed. Hey, Inter Lagos is made for final rounds, isn't it? In the Formula yeah, 1. It I mean, is. Yeah, absolutely. Who would forget 2008? What a final round that was. And 2009 as well. Uh, 2008 was was an epic one, emotional roller coaster that race, wasn't it? For so many people involved. Oh, Massa. Yeah. Uh, his dad, more than anything. He'll get a little bit sad for Massa, though. His, his dad was just then. loving it, wasn't he? Like, ah. Oh, shit. <laughs> his only, it was his only chance of uh, of it, but yeah, it was. I think what had happened, though, was it just, just. I think. Am I right that Hamilton. Vettel had got past Hamilton, I think? That was it. Yeah, so yeah, he'd that's lost what... another place. So I think they yeah. thought he was. They thought he was sort of. He was clear. And then across the rain came, and uh, you know, I, I do believe though. By the way, everybody always has a bit of a go at Timo Glock on that one. Um, but I do believe he finished higher than he was before the rain came. So it was a mm. good. It was a good gamble to do. He stayed out on the sixth, didn't he? That was right. Yeah, he yeah. did. I think. I think yeah. he did finish just behind Lewis. I'd have to check that again. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, he literally that, that got him Hamilton... going into uh, Young Chow, didn't he? That was it. So. Yeah, that was when Hamilton wasn't... Oh. Dressing like a crazy man. And whining and things <laughs> like that. And dressing like he just found clothes in the back of the... Uh, in, in the dumpster behind Asda yeah. or something. Uh, anyway... From the 60s. <laughs> yeah. Jack, Jack Keithley coming down the back straight then. He's just got um, the, the chase and uh, the clown chicane and Murray's Ben to go. He's going to take a win, which is going to put him in, well and truly, in the driving seat. He's pretty much got one hand on the ESR Formula Renault Championship. He needs to complete the last six races and finish. As long as he finishes them all, he's pretty much guaranteed the championship now. So Jack Keithley comes through, and you know what? He didn't make a mistake there. Martin Velusnor did. And Jack Keithley takes a big step towards the title. Here in Australia with that one in race two. Martin Van Luznod second. Pointed with that. The race he should have won. Stephen Baxter coming through. Third again. Finished the third. One hand on the AM title almost for... Uh... Oh, you can't say that. Yeah, Denton's still <laughs> right there, look, you know. So... No, I can't say that at all. No, it's very, very close indeed. And uh, that, that one's going to go down to the wire. Josh Thompson fifth. Stelian Cepulewski 6th, Yosonic 7th, 8th, 
for Yannick Ongana, Roy Viverke coming across in ninth, tenth for Rafe Cullinan, and Alex Smolenski finished in eleventh place. Tom Depp is the only retirement of the race. Hi everybody, we're at the halfway point of tonight's action here in the BSR Formula Renault series. We'll be back with more last two races of the evening. We come back after the break. Welcome back everybody to Apex Racing TV and the Pen Power European V8 Supercar Championship. Andrew Woodhouse here with Scott Newton at the Mount Panorama Circuit in New South Wales, the home of V8 Supercar Racing for many. And um, we saw a really good first race. We've got a second race, which is scheduled for 24 laps, but um, the 40 minute time limit, I think is going to come into play here. And um, Scott, well, that's a certainty, isn't it? That we're going to see the 40 minutes elapsed and plenty of drivers are going to um, I find it hard fighting their way through the field here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with the lap time being roughly in this session, about the same as what they were doing in the, uh, the race one, uh, roughly going to see a 19 to 20 lap race, I would think, uh, including a pit stop. Uh, yep. Pit stop window will probably open about lap four or five and then close around lap 15 or 16. So just have to see how uh, the fuel window and um, the fuel saving will come into play, but I'm sure that everyone will be in the pit lane at some point during the race. I think if if most of the drivers are smart, I think the drivers at the front need to go as long as possible and um, put in as little fuel as possible, and that will give them the best possible pit stop time. But the drivers at the back, Scott, they might try something a bit different. They might try an early stop See if they can gain some track position um, because, you know, some of the pack, especially the middle to the back of it, this 30 car field might be quite slow for the first few laps, so they might be able to gain something. Yeah, definitely trying the undercut uh, can work, especially if you're uh, one of the faster drivers held up in traffic. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, 40 minute race around here, uh, about double the time of the last race. Uh, Attrition will still play a factor hugely. Uh, just as we're coming up to the end of the, the practice session, and we're about to head up onto the grid as well. So, also, um, I do have to point out that um, thanks for stepping in today, Scott, to do the broadcast because it is um, closing on, closing in for about half past three. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Currently, as recording this, uh, 3.28 in the morning. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, this wasn't broadcasted live due to uh, technical issues. So, uh, humble apologies to the uh, league organisers and uh, also to the viewers for that. Um, Dear me, at least issues. you'll be able to watch the, uh, at least you'll be able to watch the Grand Prix at a decent time. Uh, yeah, today, <laughs> uh, being Japanese Grand Prix, uh, will be in the afternoon for us. But, um, That'll be nice for a change. Right? That's it. <laughs> So we've just got about 30 seconds before the start, then just take you through some of the grid. Adam McNally on pole, Craig Barson alongside him, Michael Evdoka in third, Victor Morris on fourth, um, Andres Perez in fifth, Klaus Winter in sixth, Chris Jackson seventh, eighth, Johnny Brandon, ninth, Dom and Gantar, and tenth, Stephen Latimore. Michael Taliancic is eleventh with Tony Klusterman in twelfth. So just 12 drivers reversed. Then um, everyone else finishing in the order that they finished the previous race, I believe. Okay. Adam McNally then, what can he do? He's not that thrilled with being on pole position. Will he be um, thrilled with it in just a few minutes time? Here we go, the red lights are on at Bathurst. And the green light is on. Great start from Barson off the second position. McNally cautious into Hell Corner. Barson trying to go around the outside, but the youth energy car maintains the lead. Everybody's through Hell Corner okay. McNally's still leading, but Barson has the inside line. Also having a look is, uh, I think it's it's uh, Michael Evdokat. He's having a look. He qualified seven, so 
if anybody's got a real chance of breaking away at the front of this, it could be could well be him as it's very close with McNally into the cutting. Also trying to go around the outside is Chris Jackson with um, several drivers getting quite close to the wall behind. Oh, yes, I see one of the uh, one of the cars in the back uh, just losing it on the entry of the cutting. I wasn't sure who that was. That might have been uh, on the time screen of Robert Lundgren. Uh, so a bit of an unfortunate mistake there for him. Uh, that puts him way back in the field. Uh, some of the uh, Damon Ganta as well as uh, second last place at the moment, so he's had an issue oh. at some point. That's very unusual for Ganta to have, a, have something wrong there on the first lap. Um, car looks okay. They have some damage on the. No, I think he looks all right. So Ganta, I wonder if he's just starting from the pit lane. Maybe he had a, a penalty to serve or something like that, but. Here comes uh, Michael Evdocker alongside Adam McNally. Evdocker going through and taking second place away from McNally. Number 14, Victor Rojon behind. And then and then that's Chris Jackson flying up the inside of Rojon into the chicane. Good move there by the never quit racing driver. Chris Jackson then up into fourth place look at this battle huge battle here Kaliancic, Klusterman and uh, 73 is Klaus Winter a couple of others involved as well there's some side by side action in there two of the fastest drivers in the series then Kaliancic number 177 and Tony Klusterman number 121 see them uh, in combat also Adam McNally still in combat with uh, this time with Chris Jackson. Jackson around the outside is taking third place here at Griffin's Bend. Good driving from Jackson. Now we can set off after the front two. Our Docker is caught up to Barson. The gap is less than half a second. Good start, largely Scott. Um, not a great deal of uh, not really any carnage to speak of. Yeah. Definitely not as much carnage as I would have expected in the first lap. Um, I think just everyone settling in. 40-minute uh, race, long um, race that uh, people can uh, try and make their moves uh, throughout uh, the race during either the pit stop phase or on track. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, the drivers will settle in uh, to race number two, uh, given that this is a uh, late afternoon track set, so it should be a little bit more grippy out there than it was in uh, the race number one. Yeah, much cooler actually out there. 10 degrees, in fact. 12, 29 Celsius is the uh, track temperature. 24 is the air temperature here at Bathurst. A small westerly wind, 8 kilometres an hour. Won't be affecting the drivers too much out there today. Uh, we do have a 24 lap race, but it won't go that distance. It will go 40 minutes around Bathurst with the lap times being over 2 minutes and 7 seconds. And uh, having a look at... Uh, ben Galite, number 22, number 022, sorry, just behind number 210, that's Matthew Belton. Ben Galite going through in the fast section at the back of the circuit and uh, makes it. So that's a good move by him up into what I believe is 22nd place. Now he's having a go on Kim Holter, so Holter showing the pace that, uh, that he usually does he liked with a good run oh and almost hitting Halter Halter defends the inside and uh, he does make you vulnerable coming out of um, Hell Corner Scott because the mountain straight is uh, is long and it's easy to be able to uh, get the cut back and get through yeah definitely it's good uh the inside's definitely going to have to run for turn two, Griffin's Bend. Uh, makes the place on Kim Halter for uh, 20th oh, place. Crash. It's Morajon. Victor Morajon. That's damage to the uh, front corner panel there on the right hand side above the old oh, DME, and he's quite slow through there, struggling to maintain control. And look at all these cars streaming through past him now. Looked like you just lost it on the way to the cutting. Yeah, just going on board at the moment. Um, 
Yeah, he's got bent steering from that. I uh, was gonna have a look at that back on the replay. Oh. Yeah, he's coming oh, and he's off again. He's off again. Struggling to steer it down the hill. Oh, number 262 has just appeared. And the. Oh, they're looking there, not blocking the track there. Who's that number 262? Alec Kowalski. It looked like he might have had a connection issue. I think he disappeared, then he dropped back in. Now I believe he's blown the engine. Yes. He needs to get it off the circuit. Yeah, just uh, having a look back on the replay now, just coming back through Skyline. Yeah, it just disappears. Um, yeah, it goes back to the uh, to another cam. Um, it just reappears at the uh, the top of the dipper, and yeah, just unfortunate there for for another drive. Not the uh, finest hour there <laughs> for those guys, I must admit. Uh, Morrison dropping down the order then, as is Kowalski. There is a fast repair available, they can come in and get that. Go back out on the circuit with a clean car. It might be slightly too early to fill it up to the end though. Although, I reckon they could make it from here, you know, Scott, because I mean, what, 30, 34 minutes or so they need to run? Yeah, 35 minutes, uh, that might be tough. Yeah, it'll be very, very tough. I think they'll be heavily fuel saving uh, if they're pitting this early. I'd say that uh, the window will open about lap five uh, or six, and then that'll allow them to charge home to the end on a full tank and and get to the end. Uh, conversely, though, the leaders will probably pit as late as they can, as you said earlier, uh, probably pitting around f between 13 and 15. Uh, laps into the race, so uh, they'll be uh, on a splash and dash strategy uh, to maximise their pace at the start. Yeah, I think you're right, and having the lighter car at the beginning can can definitely help. But also having um, having a full tank, and then uh, coming in and picking up less fuel can also be very beneficial as well. I would go with the second option, like I said, I think at the beginning, but. Um, but, you know, there are several ways to skin a cat. 100%. Yeah, it just depends on whether you're a fast driver that's getting held, by, held up by traffic um, or whether you just want to uh, fill it up at the start and then just take the splash and dash at the end. Um, it can, as you say, uh, work both ways. But uh, if you're on a strategy that's light at the start and... Um, oh, oh. Contact Galite into Bogatarev. Ben Galite hitting him at the um, at the chicane. Bogatarev going around or sideways, a little bit around, but he's lost two or three places. Bogatarev. Oh, and Chris Jackson, what's he done there? Is it the pit wall? Is it the tyres on the way into the pit scot? Never seen anything like that. Uh, yeah, I'm just taking a look back on the replay. I yes. hard, <laughs> oh, he lost it on the way in. He was going far too quickly. And that is um, named and shamed, caught on camera, Chris Jackson. Dearly me. Yeah, I just happened to uh, catch that on the back end of the replay. I was looking at that Galat uh, contact, and uh, yeah, it was just a small tap there between uh, him and uh, Bogatarev. And then, yeah, right at the end there, as you announced it, I switched back to Jackson. Uh, happened to catch that. Yeah, to, he was going too far too fast. Yeah, he was going about as fast as you would in a uh, open wheeler car that would be able to get through there, but uh, <laughs> definitely not in a, uh, a V8 supercar. Way too quick. And um, yeah, he'll um, pay the price. It looks as though that he's had a uh, 17 second stop. So, uh, so just well, a top up and uh, no tyres. While we've been talking about those accidents, actually, the lead has changed hands a couple of times, and uh, Johnny Brandon now has it. So apologies for possibly missing that. But yeah, Johnny Brandon leading, Michael Taliantic in second, Tony Klusterman in third, and fourth is Stephen Latimore, who uh, seemed being much more competitive in this second race. Race on Oscar. 
Lattimore definitely showing his pace and uh, being within uh, three or four tenths of uh, Klusterman, uh, race one winner, is um, definitely uh, step up his, oh, showing his hand here today. Uh, we saw his own that uh, Taliancic is uh, all over the back of Brandon. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if there would be a move up into uh, Griffin's brand. I reckon he's got a chance. Right there in the slips. <coughs> Excuse me, so sorry. He's right there in the slipstream. Brandon defends the inside. Taliancic trying around the outside. The Griffins is quite dirty on the outside there. But yeah, Johnny Brandon maintaining the lead. And this four car pack needs to move on. Yeah, it's also one thing to note that uh, Taliancic. Uh, we'll have to watch out for uh, his ping, especially being an Australian on a European server. So uh, he'll be one of those ones to watch, especially with uh, the ping, if there's any uh, unfortunate lag contact. Uh, having done... Uh, That's true, actually, because yeah. it, it can be... Yeah, it can be pretty damn uh, annoying, especially around the circuit like this. Is that there are very few Australians in in the um, in the race, or, or indeed New Zealanders? Oh, exactly, and uh, one broadcasting as well. So uh, it may look as though that uh, some may have a bit of lag contact. So that uh, Brandon has either clipped a wall, or that's just uh, part of the uh, the lag contact that uh, is unfortunate that uh, that comes through. So whether that resets. Uh, that'll be a factor, uh, possibly visually, but uh, maybe not so performance-wise. Brendan's yeah. doing a stellar job at the moment holding off Charlie Edge. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, Klusman in then from third position. Oh, and he's off as well, but he manages to get back on just before he hits that tyre wall as well. It'll be interesting to see how long he's in the pits for. It's an early stop. Could of course have started with the um, the big tank, Scott, and might be just topping this one up. Yeah, he could do. Um, just looking at the pit stop time now, uh, roughly the drivers around him. Uh, I've seen averages of about 12 or 13. He's uh, just gone past that now. 15.2 uh, seconds is pit stop time, so uh, fairly average stop. Um, the quickest we've seen is uh, a Doka on a 12.7. Uh, that's representative, but uh, we've seen some quicker stops. But that we may have to see whether they have to pit again for uh, another reason. True, though, I suppose you know they may have fueled the car pretty light to get that track position just to be able to side through the back markers easily. And uh, yeah, I wonder if that might be the reasoning behind that stop on just lap six for Klusterman. Um, Currently, Johnny Brandon still leading. He's giving it everything down the hill. Getting, both him and Talian just getting very, very close to the walls. Um, you've really got to be confident around here, haven't you, Scott? You've got very little margin for error, but you, you cannot be afraid to attack this racetrack. Yeah, definitely. Uh, either in uh, tin tops or uh, open wheelers, uh, this track mostly being suited to, to tin tops, as uh, many of the open wheelers uh, tend to bottom out due to the... Uh, uh, bumpy nature of this track, but yeah, confidence is equivalent to speed around here as Taliancic having a look, but uh, Brandon uh, defending well, uh, just locks up and or oh, Taliancic is going to go through. Uh, Brandon just pushing that a little bit too much and uh, unfortunately made a mistake and that allows Taliancic through. Big mistake giving up the track position, in comes Stephen Lattimore then who was in fourth place and um, yeah, Johnny Brandon well, it's all going so well. Started eighth on the grid, but that one mistake. He definitely can come back from it. He does have the pace, but he needs to make sure he sticks pretty close to um, to Michael over the next few laps. And um, through the pit stop phase, then Tony Klusterman. I wonder where he'll come out in relation to Latimore. That's the interesting thing. Funnily enough, uh, Klusterman was doing the same lap times as the leaders. So, 
going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be close. We'll see whether Klusterman's able to to jump uh, Talianchich or no. Brandon or, or safe position. Oh, mate. Well, Gantar is coming, but Gantar has not made a pit stop yet. I don't believe. But he's... Oh, that would really, really annoy Latimore if uh, Dom and Gantar can get through. And he does. But uh, Latimore does jump Tony Klusterman, so... Boosterman in uh, 12th place. Behind now Stephen Latimore. However, Dominic Gantar, who was a championship rival last season of Tony Klusterman. Oh. He might just be providing a little bit of assistance. Gantar having a look then through McPhillamy Park. Who's he having a look on? That is Johan Venter, who's in ninth place at the moment. That, so that is for position between Venter and Ganta. And the hill again. Venter getting pretty close to the walls. Ganta getting closer. Venter loses the back end slightly into Forest Elbow. Locks up a little bit. Ganta very nearly shaved the left hand side wing mirror off that holding Commodore. Right in the slipstream here, he's going to pull out the slipstream. In fact, down the Conrod straight, side by side, then into the chase. Quite interesting. Who goes Ganta? Latimore through as well, and Klusterman right on his tail, right, right with him. Talianchitz carries on, as does Johnny Brandon. But um, Johnny Brandon's lost a couple of seconds now. And that could be a massive mistake, Scott, when it comes towards the end of the race. Yeah, definitely Trevi playing a little bit of a factor. Uh, uh, the drivers that have pitted. I see that uh, also Dave Janssen was in the pit lane as well. So he's um, currently in 14th at the moment. But yeah, with um, taking an early pit stop, that is a risk that you have to take uh, trying to make through the, the traffic that hasn't pitted. So. Uh, with the last couple of laps, uh, comparing them against the leaders, uh, there was about two seconds difference that they lost uh, compared to the leaders. Taliancic on a low 207, and going to a uh, last lap of a 2093. So that's the thing. I do, I do think the later strategy is definitely the way to go. And um, I believe that's what Talianchich and Brandon look like they're doing. I could be wrong. They could be in this very lap. But, yeah, definitely a better way to attack this race, I think. Although, getting solid points would definitely help out Klusterman and Latimore in the championship. But Talianchich already leading the way. In a really good position at the moment. Yeah, I saw uh, McNally... Uh, Gantar and Lattimore, uh, there was a two wide situation through the top of Skyline and one of them had to take to the escape road so one of them will have to have a slow down penalty for that uh, I think it might have been Lattimore unfortunately for him uh, Yeah, yeah that, would, that would make sense looking at that because he's now behind Klusterman That slow down penalty could be pretty crucial for Stephen Lattimore and uh, Tony Klusterman up into ninth place In fact, that's 8th place because uh, he's overtook McNally as well. Uh, off goes Ronald Moons. I don't know if he's just being really gentlemanly and getting out of the way, I'm not sure. And he holding Commodore. Ronald Moons, who we usually do see in the... Um, some of the other series that we cover, actually, on Apex Racing TV. Coming out of the pits is number 73, Klaus Winter. And Winter has jumped Klusterman. Look at that. That's the strategy coming into effect. Win Klaus Winter has jumped Tony Klusterman, although Klusterman's going to go straight through. Yeah, a bit of a slipstreaming playing into the, the hand of our Klusterman there, but also uh, exiting the pit lane at 60 k's an hour. It's a pretty tight uh, pit lane exit, uh, which allowed Klusterman to get a, an even better run. Uh, out of Hell Corner. 
wonder if Winter could have just defended the inside there. Maybe he realises he's not really fighting Tony close to him. Ronald van Utrecht is off. He's back on right in front of Andres Perez, which I'm sure will uh, please the man from Spain. Van Utrecht, who um, I believe is from Belgium. He's down in 29th place. It's actually three laps down for Nitrex, so I'm not sure what's happened to him. Ben Galite so far. Um, I don't think he's pitted, Scott, but he's had a fantastic race so far. He's up 25 places to fifth. Yeah, he's definitely a very strong race. Uh, yeah, currently the last of the top four that haven't pitted, but uh, there's roughly about I mean, 10 cars. Lose. That haven't pitted yet so I mean he's going to lose a lot of that obviously when he comes in but but his pace is good he was catching some guys who I wouldn't normally expect him to be catching so um, he was 8th in the warm up as well so I think he's got some decent pace so let's see what sort of lap time he does this time the leader Michael Taliancic did a 2.07.2 Ben Galite did a 2.08.6 so that's pretty good considering it is Mount Panorama and it's a very difficult circuit yeah Ben Galite going along well and the longer he stays out Scott the better he's gonna be I think yeah 100% uh, up 26 places at the moment as he crossed the line um, he's just got another one out of that so. <laughs> yeah um, as you said yeah confidence is key around here um, he may be a little bit slower than Tal Taliancic but uh, currently f sitting fourth at the moment uh, it's a pretty pretty solid job at the moment I reckon they a, um, Where would he come out in about? He'd probably come out in about 15th, 16th place if he was to pit now. I reckon. Yeah, that's roughly my calculation. Especially uh, drivers having a rough 15 second average pit lane time. Sorry, pit stop time. That's the fact that you're travelling down at pit lane at 60 k's an hour. So yeah, it's another 15 say, seconds pit lane time uh, roughly really as well, isn't it? Yeah, so that would yeah. put him about 16th place roughly. Battle for the lead is still two seconds then between Taliancic and Brandon. Perez is in third, but he hasn't stopped yet. So we'll see what he does this time. If any of these guys are going to come into the pits, Johnny Brandon pits from second place. So got movement up front. Again, a bit earlier though. So he's going to have the disadvantage pitting earlier than Taliancic. Although he's going to have a quicker stop. So chances are he's going to be out in front of Klusterman. Yeah, we'll just watch this pit lane here. Our pit stop here uh, as he comes up to the box now. Uh, gets his uh, fast repair. And there's the counter. Uh, just coming to 10 seconds now. That's a very quick pit stop. It's roughly about a 10 or 11 second stop. Uh, just happened to reset on me as he... Uh, double jump there so uh, 0.2 second pit stop is not his actual time but uh, like about a 10 or 11 second stop and he's about 3 seconds ahead of Blusterman by the look of it yeah that would make sense I think again though it's just uh, Clusterman's strategy what it did was it got, it, it got him some clear air didn't it but it didn't really um, it, relative to his other competitors it didn't really work did it it worked well compared to the it meant he cleared the entire midfield didn't it but yeah it just didn't mean that uh, it just meant he lost a lot of time to the guys at the front no exactly um, yeah that is one of the, the pitfalls of taking an early pit stop but like with the field spreading out quite nicely now um, there are larger gaps that that people can fall into that haven't pitted. Uh, we've still got uh, the front two that haven't pitted, and uh, Johan Venter and uh, Matthew Belton that haven't pitted yet, but uh, every other driver has. A Galite as, as well. Harris just been in, has he? Yeah, according to my time, it's been Galite had a, oh, okay. a slightly longer stop. 
uh, 22 seconds, but yep. uh, is out in uh, 11th place. Iraq connected to the server. Aliantic in from the lead then. And um, very, very important stop for the championship leader. He wants to take this race victory. And, um, he's done exceptionally well with so far. Also into the pits in the background is Simon Field. And Field is one lap down in 24th at the moment, but he may... Well, he won't unlap himself. Tally Antic comes out then. Where's he going to be? Where's Johnny Brandon? Johnny Brandon is just coming through Murray's... Uh, through Hell Corner then, so... Several seconds behind Tally Antic then. I think Tally Antic has actually extended his lead, Scott. Yeah, 9.4 second stop compared to about an 11 second stop for Brent. So, yeah, just two seconds gained straight there in the pit stop, so... Yeah, currently between Brandon and Taylor Ange, it's up to about 3.9 seconds. Yep. Boosterman is not that far behind Brandon, actually 2.5 seconds. And closing in at 6 tenths of a second a lap on that lap. So the Canadian reigning champion is uh, looking extremely strong out there. Dominic Gantar has uh, raced a pretty good job as well so far. Although he still hasn't pitted, so he'll be going as long as possible, I would imagine, to give himself the best possible chance of um, finishing in the top 10, which, let's face it, will be his goal now. Andres Perez is still out there in second place. Must be nearing the end of the pit window now, though, Scott. There can't be a lot left in that tank. No, definitely not. Uh... I think we're on uh, lap number 13. Oh, sorry, lap number 12. So, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, uh, so we're definitely nearing the end of the tank, I'd say. If they're burning about five laps of, uh, sorry, five litres of fuel per lap, uh, yeah, it's, there's probably not much more than maybe 10 litres in the, in the tank. So, I'd say we need to be in the pit lane within the next one or two laps. And is it this one? No, it's not. So he carries on for another six kilometers, does Andres Perez. He's 19.6 seconds behind. I know he's actually in the lead now, isn't he, Perez? Sorry. <laughs> it's actually three seconds in the lead, but that's, of course, not going to last when um, Aliancic, Brandon, Kusterman all get past him in the pit stops. Probably far enough ahead of Gantar that he maybe doesn't have to worry too much, although. 1.7 seconds taken out that time by Gantor. 206.5 from Kloosterman. and I think that's the fastest lap of the race, Scott. That's that's fantastic. That's quicker than um, in qualifying. Yeah, definitely. Was with the uh, low fuel that these cars have now, um, he'll be definitely be able to take advantage of the pace that he has. Um, I see that um, Kloosterman's fastest lap uh, was a 206.8, so maybe there might have been a a uh, small contact with the wall uh, that he's brushed up against that may have uh, invalidated that 6.5 but uh, that cracking pace from Klusterman at this part of the race. Of course we have to point out that yes the track is cooler than it was earlier on and uh, on iRacing that means that you will generally go quicker but still that's a, still a fantastic um, lap time to do in the middle of a race at Mount Panorama. He's really flying. He's uh, Tony Kusterman giving the walls virtually no respect at all and um, fantastic driving really uh, but even that last lap though Scott with all its pace and the fastest lap of the race so far only one tenth quicker than Johnny Brandon Brandon going very well as well yeah definitely Brandon uh, holding on to uh, a net second place at the moment uh, once uh, Perez decides to take the mid lane uh, yeah Brandon does still a job uh, didn't Which see much surely of Perez is going to do this time. Yeah, just he would imagine. Uh, yep, and he's di diving into the pit lane right now. So uh, Taliantic will uh, resume the lead uh, once he takes to the uh, lap number 14. Might be able to get possibly six, sixth or seventh place for uh, Andres Perez here. 
see what he does then. Let's see where Klaus Winter is, because I think he's the one who's going to be racing against the most. But Winter is... Winter's gone. Winter's out. Has there been a massive crash somewhere with a few different drivers at once? Uh, Have we had a big one with Bloom and Janssen, possibly? Because... Have a quick look at this. Oh, Dave Janssen just pulled off at the side of the racetrack and quit. It looks like um, Michael Bloom has got terrible damage. That is, that is going no further. That was going no further. And um, Robert Lundgren out as well. So we've lost a few drivers from unrelated incidents. I think. Look, having a quick look at where. Um, Perez comes out, he is, you know what, he's only a couple of seconds behind Latimer, so fantastic stint by Perez. Yeah, definitely. Uh, resumed back in sixth place. Uh, I haven't got uh, live gaps on me at the moment, but as I say, within a couple of, oh yeah, it looks about two and a half, three seconds. Uh, yep. Looking at that visually, just coming down the top of Skyline now, uh, through the dipper now, slightly wider than he would have liked, but yeah, manages to get through there safely uh we'll only about 20 seconds off the lead you know that's not bad at all no definitely not uh from Perez doing a uh, stellar job i mean similar to sergio perez he's always very good with the tires isn't he and uh andres perez taking a leaf out of the mexicans but the man from spain um very very good position in the race at the moment Johnny Brandon's got horrible front damage, though. Where has that occurred, Scott? Uh, I see. Oh, no, it's come back. Front end. Yeah, it's just the, right. the net code. Yeah, it's come back. I was like, well, it's a whole part, half of the... <laughs> whole quarter of the car missing. But he, he's dropping back towards Tony Kusterman. I don't think that's the reason, though. Brandon's still lapping in the 206s. Kusterman's gone even quicker with a 206.4. The last three laps have been a 206.54, a 5.8, and a 4.4. Brilliant consistency, brilliant speed uh, by Tony Klusterman. Michael Taliancic is pretty much matching that as well. 206.6 on the previous lap, just a quarter of a second slower. Yeah, fantastic pace from Klusterman. Uh, saying the uh, last season's champion, so uh, definitely showing that he's... Uh, Still got it uh, in this car, and yeah, definitely trying to ma trying to close back on that. Oh, sorry, minimise the damage in the terms of the championship for for this season. Uh, not sure how many rounds there are left. I'm about to find that out, but yeah, just trying to minimise the damage so that uh, he can take it to uh, the final rounds of the championship. I wonder if Perez can catch Latimore. Might be pretty close. We've incidentally we've got four race meetings left after this we've got two rounds at Phillip Island that will be on the 4th of November and then on the uh, 18th of November we've got Don International and then the final round of the season will be coming at the Nordschleife for a two hour special that will be on the 2nd of December right here on Apex Racing TV the Nordschleife Scott in the V8 supercar cannot think of anything more terrifying yeah, I think probably an open wheeler on the, the Norse life would be just ed edging it out. But yeah, V8's <laughs> around uh, the Norse life. Uh, and it's the, um, I think it's the complete layout with the, the GP circuit as well. So uh, It's the, the VLN course, which, um, have a look. Yeah, it does have the, uh, the Grand Prix circuit. My favourite layout of the Norse life, actually, as well, would be with the Grand Prix circuit involved because I think it gives, gives the drivers a lot more chance to actually race on that on that part of the track yeah 100% uh, but yeah any any car around the Nordschleife is uh, scary in itself but uh, yeah 650 horsepower and no traction control um, yeah it just adds it to another puts it at another level I think and not particularly great brakes <laughs> yeah no that's ABS a, as well that's another thing it's a good job you don't have to hammer the brakes that many times, actually, at that circuit. There's only no. two or three heavy braking zones, really, at the North Slifer. 
Um, Stephen Latimos pegging the gap with um, Andres Perez. Perez a 2.085. In fact, half a second quicker that time round. So he must have lost some at the... Very... Oh! Latimo very nearly into the wall at the cutting. Look how much time Perez has gained there. Yeah, he's gained a huge amount of time just running wide at the cutting there. He's probably lost at least a second there. Uh, just getting onto the marbles oh. there. Clipped the wall, I think. As well. Yeah, he definitely clipped the wall. He's really struggling. Really struggling to keep the car pointing in the right direction, Stephen Latimo. Dear me. We've only got about three laps to go, Scott, as well. Yeah, so closing down at the end. Um, was it uh, coming up to lap number 17 when they, they when they crossed the line? So Yeah, we're on 17 now, mate, oh, actually. Sorry, yeah. No, it's all right. Yeah, the time has been showing <laughs> 16, so yeah, it's just a little bit Pally confusing. But... Just come in. He's just coming around to start 18. So, uh, yeah, it should be only about four or five minutes left in the session, uh, in the race to go. So, yeah, it'll be about two or three laps to go. So, it's going to be, yeah, I reckon. Well, it might only be two. Oh, okay. Could, could well only be two laps. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I reckon it could be. Could be just two. But we'll see. Italiantic will be hoping it's two. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> he won't be open for a third one. Oh, now, Brandon and Klusterman side by side into Griffin's Bend. Klusterman has to get out of it. Brilliant. Driving from Johnny Brandon. Johnny Klusterman challenging to second place for the first time, really. And uh, Brandon was equal to it. Good stuff to... Um, he defended the right side of the circuit, Scott. I think you have to be on the inside there at Griffin's. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Brandon forcing Klusterman onto the marbles and uh, Klusterman losing a little bit of grip and having to take it around to the outside. So just having to fall back into the third place at the moment. Brandon doing a, an exceptional job holding on to second place at the moment. With that battling, though, that's allowing Teleanshi to, to gap even further, uh, gap out to just under five and a half seconds. But yeah, there's a, an even bigger gap behind, so there's not much uh, pressure from behind. I've just seen on the uh, <laughs> in the, the back section of the circuit something I've never noticed before around here is a 60 km an hour sign <laughs> the, at the back section of the track. Uh, one of the fastest parts of the course. Random speed limit sign. But um, no speed limits being adhered to, of course, here. It is public roads, though, Scott. Am I right that cars do just go about the business along here? Yeah, mainly. During the main part of the year, uh, this is a public road. Uh, is a, as you said, a 60 km an hour limit. But uh, no, there's a load of speed <laughs> cameras around here too. So uh, people trying to uh, take their hands and think it as a race to a race track. But uh, obviously, it's public road during the main main part of the year. Brilliant. It's a bit like the old, a bit like Spa before it was turned into a fully permanent facility. But well, that was still public roads. Loosterman then, very publicly, publicly trying to challenge Johnny Brandon, mounting straight. He's in the slipstream, he is pretty close. Brandon half defends the inside, might leave him vulnerable up into the cutting. Possible for Loosterman, but if Brandon just drives his line through this section, I don't think Tony will be able to get through. I think we're going to be on the final lap. He's got 15 seconds to go. Could well be the end here. Yeah, I don't see any white flags. So, let's so have to wait and see how. Uh, whether the Italian force. Yeah, whether the Italian uh, forces the oh. last lap. Hear me, Brandon was so close to the outside wall there. Really giving it everything on this, uh, what might be the final lap. Not 100% sure here, but time has run out. So it should be Taliantic through Forest Elbow. A five and a half second lead. Oh, Klusterman sideways, he loses it. Loses the car, Tony Klusterman. He's still got 
20 seconds behind him. He doesn't have to worry, worry there, but Johnny Brandon can now breathe a sigh of relief. That battle is done and dusted. And is Michael Taliancic going to be done and dusted here? He's just got the chase to go. And Murray's Bend. Here we go then. Through the chicane for the final time, potentially. We'll have to see. The time has expired. Yes, the, the checkered flag is out now. And Michael Taliancic coming through. And he wins the feature race here at Mount Panorama. Fantastic driving. Perfect strategy. Maximum points. Donny Brandon in second place. Fantastic job by him. And Tony Klusterman's going to get third place. After a spin on the final lap, he was fighting hard with Johnny Brandon. And then Latimore. He's going to be well ahead of Perez. What's happened to Andres Perez on this final lap? He's running out of fuel, I think, Scott. He's barely staying ahead of Gantar. I think the car was stuttering as he's coming across. But he does indeed come across in fifth. Yeah, great job there from Perez. Uh, luckily that the, uh, the start-finish line is really close to the edge of the, the final corner, so he um, manages to hold on to the uh, fifth place there. Boozin, Boozin and Morizon for 10th. Boozin, is he going to have a go into, into Murray's? Oh, he thinks about it. Morrison hits the curb hard. He goes onto the grass. It's going to be very close, that, and I think. I think it's going to be Boozin. Well, Boozin cruising past Morrison. Well, oh, that'll be annoying for him. <laughs> Just lost that position by one tenth of a second. At the end, not what you wanted. Hyde Whiting and Adam McNally for the final corner. That's pretty close as well. But McNally gets it. And Johan Venter is the last man across the line. The last corner he comes. Takes 17th place. Right then, let's run you through the finishing order here for round 14 of the season in the iRacing Pen Power Euro V8 Supercar Championship. Michael Taliancic takes the win. 6.8 seconds ahead of Johnny Brandon, who finishes second. Tony Klusterman in third after the spin on the final lap. Stephen Latimore in fourth ahead of Andres Perez, who played the strategy absolutely perfectly. And I think, for, for me, the right strategy all the way through. Dominic Gantar in sixth position. Head of Chris Jackson. Then um, Ben Gal In fact, Gantar actually pitted just um, one lap from the end. Very, very impressive indeed. Chris Jackson in 7th, 8th for Bengalite, ninth for Nikolai Bogatyrev, uh, Samuel Buzan in 10th, Victor Moraj on 11th, Kim Holter 12th, 13th for Matthew Belton, 14th for Adam McNally, 15th Clyde Whiting, Anthony Woodward in 16th and Johan Venter in 17th, Cars one lap down or more, more, Bill Switzer one lap down, Michael Evdocker two laps down, Peter Bingham likewise, John Roberts three laps down and then um, Cars are retired some time ago. Um, in fact, Ronald Van Eitrek did finish the race, but he's four laps down. Klaus Winter retired uh, a couple of laps ago. And then Simon Field, Dave Janssen, Michael Bloom, Ronald Moons, Robert Lundgren, Richard Brightwell, Craig Barson, and early on, Alec Kowalski. Right then, Scott. Um, mate, it's been, it's been fun tonight, spending uh, Saturday evening with you in the V8 Supercar Series. I hope you've enjoyed uh, filling in for, uh, for Alex Simpson. Yeah, it was great to um, fill in for Alex Simpson and uh, always great to uh, to broadcast with you, Andrew. Um, yeah, it's Bathurst, one of those uh, classic tracks that uh, always provides action and we definitely had it in spades tonight. I uh, just can't wait until the uh, the real-life Bathurst 1000 that uh, is on uh, later today, uh, Australian time, or tomorrow, uh, European and uh, US time. So uh, definitely looking forward to uh, that one as well. But also the uh, in the Formula One, the uh, Suzuka Formula One Grand Prix, on in uh, later in the afternoon as well. Yeah, it should be a brilliant day of motor racing uh, all around the world. And um, yeah, thank you for everybody who's who's watching. Um, Scott's going to go and get some sleep. Um, I'm going to go to not get some sleep. And then, um, but we're going to be back here tomorrow evening. Um, more action on Apex Racing TV. In fact. Uh, we have got, and uh, do excuse me because I do forget the name of the league. It is a new 
new race series that's going to be here on Apex Racing TV. It's the TSRC TV VTEC 2.4 hour series. That's going to be at Circuit Shield Villeneuve in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. That will be coming to you at uh, 4.45 p.m. GM, uh, UK time. Um, I beg your pardon. And then we've got the Club 73 Touring Car Championship at 9 o'clock, I believe. Right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And um, it's a good night from Apex Racing TV.